Welcome to Boise Paramotors. Today we are going to discuss a pretty sensitive topic and the topic is whether you should be self-taught flying paramotors or whether you should go to school and have an instructor explain you and teach you and guide you through the process of getting in the air and of course landing safely. So before we start this topic, cue the intro. Okay, well, welcome back. We are going to, as I said, we're going to discuss topic of uh, self-trained versus school-trained for flying paramotors. And I'm going to give you my experiences. I am so-called self-taught, and I say so-called because I really uh, learn from YouTube and talking to other people, not necessarily having an instructor. So in that. Um, that point of view I'm going to give you my experiences how my journey started and uh, how I became a paramotor pilot my background is in army aviation and I have uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours in the aircraft flying different aircrafts uh, mostly rotary wing and so I did have some experiences um, I knew what the rate of descent is, I knew what the VFR sectional chart was, I knew how to read weather, I knew air spaces and so forth. So I had some background, but my paramotor knowledge was really limited. My friend, uh, for this purpose we're gonna call him uh, Peter, my friend Peter came to me and he said, listen, I've been watching these videos on YouTube and this is a sport that I'm really interested in. So I started watching paramotor videos like 99% of people did on YouTube and I thought to myself well this is something that is going to probably be expensive because of the equipment and um, you know I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get into it. So a couple of weeks later Peter calls me and he says hey man I'm gonna send you a text with a picture. So he sends me pictures of this trike and the trike had a motor on it and he bought, I guess he on some trade or whatever, got the trike and the wing and kiting harness and all this equipment was from basically 90s, right? Late 90s. So very heavy. Um, we were not sure how it worked and so forth. And, and uh, he said, let's go and kite first. He bought a paragliding, a paramotor PPG Bible and uh, so he read through it, I went with him, we kited a couple of times, it was more difficult than we anticipated. Uh, then I realized really that this is going to be way more difficult than what YouTube videos are presenting to be. Um, one winter night after, I don't know, we had probably maybe 5-10 hours each of kiting, I called uh, Peter and I said, hey man, I watched these videos on towing, I think we can tow each other. And Peter said, all right, let's try it. So I had a 1996 Land Cruiser uh, and uh, I had a rope with a quick release. And Peter, of course, had a wing and he had the paragliding harness. And I assume, I mean, we assumed, oh, we're gonna get in the air, it's gonna be fun, he's gonna re quick release, he's gonna land and he's gonna get some air time. Well, I guess some of you might even guess how this is gonna end. So. I called up our friend David and I said, David, we need another person. Will you help us um, in this endeavor? And he's like, well, what are you guys doing? I'm, I, I told him, we're going to do something really stupid. So in the back of my mind, I already knew that this probably wasn't the best way of doing things, right? Um, David gets in the car, Peter gets in the car, I'm in the car. We drive to a dirt patch and uh, we hook up Peter and I said to Peter you know I'm gonna drive very slow five to ten miles per hour and you David sit on the tailgate of uh, my Land Cruiser and you let me know when to stop and Peter when you're in the air when you get up in the air and you you know you're somewhere there comfortable you just tug the quick release and 
quick release it and land safely, right? And so Peter and I had conversations. Peter thought, well, this is really, you know, his adrenaline rush went up before we even started going. Mine did. Um, we didn't know how this is going to end, right? Um, David is sitting in the back of the tailgate and um, we hooked everything Peter up the way we saw in YouTube videos and we thought well Peter is going in the air right this is gonna be awesome but we hope it ends up good right so I put uh, my uh, Land Cruiser in the gear I start towing slow I'm looking in the rear view mirror and I see Peter running Peter running and Peter starts going up in the air and I'm looking the rope in the rear view mirror and it's coming straight and then it disappears and I look to my left window and I see rope coming tighten up and David is telling me stop stop so I stop that rope keep passing me and I see Peter falling sideways on the ground on the on the dirt and I'm thinking this guy is dead right rope was around 70 feet long but when we say 70 feet, that wasn't the just falling right out of the sky. That wing kind of, you know, slowed down that fall. However, I see Peter moving, and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's alive. Run towards Peter, and um, I get there, and Peter is alive, right? But his foot is hurting. He is holding his foot, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, he broke his foot, whatnot. We and hook him immediately set him down and Peter sprang his uh, ankle so long story short that wasn't very good experience right but I'm determined to go and Peter and I had a deal that we're gonna start flying at the same time and Peter is of course busted ankle he's not gonna do much after this and uh, you know he healed a little bit and we decide, okay, I'm gonna put Peter's equipment, and it was snow, and I watched a bunch of YouTube videos, how to run, how to inflate your wing, how to apply brakes, and I'm thinking this is gonna be okay. So you can see that one mistake didn't stop us necessarily, right? So one night, snowy night, we go to the school playground, and we decide we're gonna take off from there, and snow is like yay deep. Um, so we didn't even think how we're gonna run, how we're gonna land. We have zero experience, zero flights, right? And so um, I decide to take off and this young guy sees us what we're doing, he pulls over and he says, hey, my dad flies these, he has experience, do you want me to call him? He's looking for people to fly and we're like, sure. So he calls his dad, his dad comes we're waiting on him and he's like guys you're not doing this right you're gonna kill yourself right so we're like okay let's you know let's wait and uh, show us how you take off right and this guy's name was James so James says okay I will show you how to take off and what I do and maybe that'll show you give you a little bit more confidence how to do things so we were all okay yeah awesome so James had a Vitorazzi classic Vitorazzi 185 master classic on the renegade frame which was a plastic frame and we went and watched him a couple of times take off and land and we thought well this looks easy right so um, James decides to upgrade his rig and he offers to sell us his equipment so I remember buying a used wing off a of Facebook page and I paid like eight, nine hundred bucks. This was an older wing, a couple of years old, um, beginner's wing. I did the research. It was something that will get me in the air, right? And I buy James's equipment, um, again, Renegade frame, plastic frame, good engine, um, good prop. He had a carbon fiber prop. For, uh, sold by glider sports and uh, I put this engine on and it was 10 times lighter than the engine that Peter had right so I do a couple of runs I try to get in the air a couple of times a couple of times I get in the air just for four feet and not knowing what I'm doing getting scared 
adrenaline rush, I let go of the throttle, throttle off, and I end up breaking uh, the frame, landing on the ground and breaking the frame. Well, that plastic frame was, I don't know how many times, fixed by the flex tape. And uh, I fixed it, I broke so many times, I ordered new parts for that frame. So this is getting pretty expensive. I broke the propellers, at least three or four propellers, and uh, finally I'm at the point where I need to decide whether I'm gonna keep going with this sport or whether I'm gonna the sell all the equipment. Well, one day um, James come with me out and he's like, well, let's go and try and see how you're gonna do, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be there just in case something happens to you. I'm like, all right. So I go and I run on my own and wing comes up and we're on the basically on a sod farm and there's a sprinkler pipe there and I am running towards the sprinkler pipe and I'm thinking well um, one thing that I can do is quit or I just have to punch the gas so I punch the gas that thing took me in the air it was really something that I didn't expect there was nobody talking in my ear like you would have in school and uh, that thing took me off in the air and I was scared so I let the throttle go off now I'm coming closer to the ground I press the throttle back I'm going up and so I was go doing this entire flight the flight lasted probably two minutes and it was two minutes of pure adrenaline rush I came back I made a loop just like you would in any traffic pattern I'm coming back I'm decide to land and my friend is showing me like this kill the engine kill the engine so I kill the engine and I'm just thinking what did I learn from YouTube videos how am I gonna flare and I remember as I was coming down I'm flaring and I'm doing this perfect landing and I landed perfectly needless to say that perfect landing didn't happen in the next 10 flights right I think it was just luck that I landed and nothing got broke um, while I was flying it was just pure adrenaline rush and when I landed I was exhausted from that adrenaline rush if you've been ever in uh, fights or or shooting situations or um, you know wherever and you had a strong adrenaline rush you know how much that adrenaline rush actually exhausts your body so I talked to lots of people that had went, gone to school and um, some of them had the same luck as I did, some of them had better luck and some of them had worse luck than I did. We have, um, I know people that landed on the roofs, okay, that had two schools done. I know a guy who came back from school, had seven, eight flights and destroyed his equipment right after on the first flight after school right hundreds of dollars in equipment damage now what school does give you I think is somebody who will guide you through the process and you mitigate that risk of crashing at least I would have if I went through school however some school experiences were not that great uh, my friends had experiences where they would go to school and the instructor would force them to buy their equipment. It's like going to the car parking lot. It's like non-stop. You gotta buy this equipment. This my equipment is much safer than anybody else's equipment, or my equipment performs way better than anybody else's equipment. And so, I had friends that went to schools that um, instructors wouldn't give them time. They would give them syllabus and expect them to read it and not explain it. One of the biggest pet peeves that I have with the schools, so you go somewhere for eight to 10 days and you learn about these things, you learn how they get you in the air, but then you have a weather day and during the weather day, they don't teach you about the weather, how to read the weather. They don't teach you about um, VFR sectionals, how to read VFR sectionals. They don't teach you about air spaces. They don't teach you how to maintain your equipment. So you pay so much money and if it's a weather day, these guys go out and finish their orders, sell their equipment, leave you alone. Really don't do the justice to be with you and teach you 
because you paid to them. Just because you're not flying in a school doesn't mean that they cannot instruct you to become a better pilot. So, long story short, I don't know which way to go, self-trained or not self-trained, um, whether to go to school or whether not to go to school, but I gave you some insight how my journey started and some insight of my friends that had a, not such a good experiences with the schools. I have friends that thought it had the best experiences with the schools and when you ask them about, um, about air spaces, when you ask them about do they know how to read the weather, they have no idea. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. And they're happy about their schools, right? So long story short, uh, thank you for watching Boise Paramotors. Please subscribe if you like this video and feel free to leave the comments. Peace out.